I myself didn't start out in IT at a university perspective. I was more into biology, genetics, but I did enjoy solving tough problems. It was always that, what does this mean? Or how do I understand? Or how does that work exactly? It was that love at the time of that science of biology and understanding how the different genetic functions, genotypes kind of work together that kind of then led me into computers. Hello and welcome to the Cisco Learning Network podcast. If you've listened to our show before, you'll recognize that voice as Joe Clark, Distinguished Services Engineer at Cisco. If you haven't listened to our show before, just know that Joe is at the forefront of designing all of the requirements, testing, and learning programs for Cisco certifications. And if you don't know what Cisco certifications are, don't worry. We'll get to that part soon. Whether you're considering if IT is right for you or you're still sorting out your career journey, this episode gives you all the information you need to get started. We'll be hearing from Joe about why you should consider a career in IT, how Cisco certifications play a huge role in the hiring process for technology jobs, and what you can expect in your career journey. But first, Joe talks about how the world of technology is changing and growing at an exponentially rapid pace. Hi, welcome to the introduction to Cisco certifications or Cisco certs. My name is Joe Clark. I'm a distinguished engineer here at Cisco in our learning and certifications group. And I'm really excited you've decided to explore this opportunity of getting certified with Cisco. Whether or not you're currently in IT or you just think this might be something that's interesting to you, you can certainly agree that technology has taken over the world. If you're not currently in IT, you're probably interacting with your phone, with a computer, with a tablet. You're doing something that is touching the world of IT, that is touching the internet. And it is that networking, especially in the times that we live in, that allows us to continue to remain connected to people. And it's that interconnectivity that has driven new forms of connectivity and new forms of interacting with people. And that's only getting more and more prevalent. It's only permeating into more and more areas. So you think, for example, just work, just general, typically I went to the office, now I work here at home. And I still need to be connected to the people I work with. I need to be connected to the data, the documents, the elements of work at Cisco in order to do my job. I need to be able to connect to that securely. I need to be able to connect to that and get the kind of performance that I would expect if I went into the office. So you can see that the technology, even in companies, even in organizations where technology wasn't a key thing, it's becoming a important, a critical means of getting around today, of getting by today, of innovating and being truly successful today. Joe's not wrong. In fact, while the use of the internet has grown each year since it was invented, in the past two years, the usage of the internet increased by 1,355%, according to the site broadbandsearch.net. They also state that, quote, with a worldwide estimated population of 7.9 billion, approximately 5.25 billion people have access to and use the internet. That means 66.2% of the world's population uses the internet, end quote. And so that is one of the reasons why we need a community, a rich community, a growing community of certified individuals, people that are able to help this digital transformation, help people who might not be there in terms of their understanding of technology or their understanding of how technology can best work for them, how they can help them get over that divide and make technology truly successful. So speaking of which, if you're not in IT and if you're thinking, hmm, Joe, your pitch sounded good, is IT the right fit for you? I myself didn't start out in IT at a university perspective. I was more into biology, genetics, but I did enjoy solving tough problems. It was always that, what does this mean or how do I understand or how does that work exactly? It was that love at the time of that science of biology and and understanding how the different genetic functions, genotypes kind of work together that kind of then led me into computers. I get this computer for graduation and I'm starting to experiment with this and see what I can, I'd like to say learn, but actually break. And then it's how do I fix that breakage? 
And when I came to Cisco, I came into our technical assistance center, essentially our customer support, technical support, and I just thrived in that area. So if you like saying, well, here's the problem, we don't really know what the solution is going to be yet, but here's the problem. And if you want to be that person solving the problem, then IT might be right for you. In this day and age, you know that security in this world of the internet, security and not just like protecting access to assets or protecting access to data, but also protecting one's privacy, your privacy on the internet, my privacy on the internet. There is a great need for people who understand that, who can think like the hackers out there, who can think like the people who want to either break into things or socially engineer their way into things, how we can build better defenses to protect our data and to protect our privacy. As the world's interconnectivity grows, so too do cyber threats. The use of malware, which is software that is specifically designed to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to a computer system, increased by 358% through 2020, according to a study by the cybersecurity company Deep Instinct. That same study found that ransomware usage, which is a type of malicious software designed to block access to a computer system until a sum of money is paid, increased by 435% from 2019 to 2020. And some of the most vulnerable institutions in our society are being targeted. According to the US Healthcare Cybersecurity Market 2020 report, quote, more than 90% of healthcare organizations suffered at least one cybersecurity breach in the previous three years, end quote. And that leads into being that cyber detective. How do you think like those hackers? How do you think one step ahead of them so that you're able to defend and you're able to defeat those attacks, sometimes before they even get serious? And then I mentioned this in the work example I gave. If you love being part of that interconnection, if you like this idea of, you know, when I was home and I couldn't see people in person, I was still able to connect with them. And it was through that internet, it was through that social networking that I was able to kind of keep my sanity. Then IT can be right for you. You can be the person who's thinking up that next wave of technology or making sure that kind of interconnecting, that personal interconnecting of technology is working for the people who need it. So what are some of these benefits of certification? So we talked about, is IT right for you? Is, is this is the kind of thing that you're getting into? But once you're in, why would you get certified? You could learn the technology perhaps without getting certified, but why do you want to be certified? Before we get into the why of getting certified, let's talk about the what. What exactly are Cisco certifications? Cisco career certifications bring valuable, measurable rewards to technology professionals and to the organizations that employ them. Like certifications in other industries, Cisco certifications provide proof that you know your stuff and have what it takes to be a part of an IT team. To achieve any Cisco certification, you have to pass the exam associated with that certification. The exams for Cisco certifications vary because the certifications have been designed to match different levels of skills, knowledge, and experience in IT. Those certification levels basically include entry level, which is used as a starting point if you're interested in a career as a networking professional, associate level, which proves that you've mastered the essentials needed to launch a career as a networking professional. This includes the popular and in-demand CCNA as one example. Professional, this is where you select a core technology track and a focus concentration exam to customize your professional level certification. You can choose between collaboration, cyber ops, data center, devnet, which is basically developing an automation, enterprise, security, or service provider. Once you choose one of those tracks, you really hone in on that subject to prove that you have a professional knowledge level in terms of skills, experience, and technical knowledge. And expert. That's the highest and most challenging certification to obtain. With this certification, you establish yourself as the best of the best. When employers see that someone is Cisco certified, it's kind of like seeing a candidate for a position that went to the same school as you. You know that the same curriculum that candidate went through prepared you, so it must be the same for that candidate. It's trust, and it's become industry standard. According to a Cisco 2019 tech manager survey, quote, 99% of organizations surveyed use technical certifications to make hiring decisions, end quote. 
in a different study called Five Reasons Why Employers Look for IT Certifications from CompTIA. Quote, 91% of employers believe IT certifications are a reliable predictor of a successful employee, end quote. A lot of times it is show me the money. It's coming back to how exactly is this like really going to benefit me? And just to let you know that the average U.S. network engineer has a salary increase of 15% with certification. That's always going to vary, obviously, but that certified individual, and we'll see why, we'll talk about why, that certified individual does bring a lot of gravitas, and there is a need for that person, especially that person who is truly passionate and is truly on that lifelong learning journey. And that is why certification is so valuable to employers and thus to us, the individuals. For those of us who really find this very interesting, knowledge is that key value or that key reason why we get certified. I don't care how you prepare for certification, whether or not you take structured courses like from an instructor or you take uh, self-paced courses online or you just find things to do, you experiment, you just like to get your hands dirty and you, and you look for those opportunities to say, lab it up, so to speak. You're going to gain knowledge. In order to meet the criteria of our certifications, of the exam topics that we list in our certifications, you're going to have to experiment. Joe just mentioned something that is integral to Cisco certifications, exam topics. Let me say that again, because it cannot be emphasized enough. Exam topics are extremely important to your preparation process for Cisco certification exams. For each certification, there is a list of topics that will be covered in the exam. These lists provide two important pieces of information. First, they show by means of percentage the amount of focus or weight given to each general topic or domain in an exam. Knowing the percentages will allow you to allocate study and test-taking time more strategically. For example, for the exam topics list for the CCNA exam, I'm able to see that networking fundamentals comprises 20% of the exam. Network access also makes up 20% of the exam, IP connectivity makes up 25%, IP services 10%, and so on and so forth. The second piece of crucial information they provide is additional detail about each domain by means of subtopics, which will give you a clearer sense of exam coverage up front. So using the exam topics list for the CCNA exam once again, I'm able to see that within the network fundamentals topic, I will need to know how to explain the role and function of network components including routers, layer 2 and layer 3 switches, next generation firewalls, and so on and so forth. I will also need to be able to demonstrate my ability to configure and verify IPv4 addressing and subnetting. Let's pause here again because there's another key detail to what I just said. Notice in my first example, I used the word explain. In my second example, I said the word configure. Throughout your process of studying for any Cisco certification, it's extremely important that you understand how these verbs contrast with each other. Anywhere you see conceptually based verbs such as describe, explain, compare, those are exam topics that will require you to be able to speak clearly about those topics, and you might expect multiple choice questions. Whereas when you see more action-oriented verbs like configure or verify, you might be expected to be able to perform a lab-based activity within an exam, so you will need to be strong at labbing those topics. For example, configure and verify IPv4 addressing and subnetting indicates that I will need to have a strong ability to perform that type of a task. Whew. I know that's a lot but it's important to know when you will need to be able to describe and explain something, and when you will have to be able to demonstrate and actually do it. And this is something that you'll find at any level in any and all Cisco certification exams. You're going to have to do some of these things. It's not just about reading in a book, which is important, but it's also then about reinforcing that knowledge through doing. And so as you do that, whatever works the best for you, you're going to build that knowledge. And that knowledge then you're going to find that, wow, I really know this. And it's especially nice when you're sitting down for that certification exam and you get that question and you're like, yes, I really understand this. I know it. 
Obviously, the answer is B, and you're very confident in that. And that translates then into when you're doing your job, when you're applying that knowledge into something that is very practical and sometimes very critical to your organization. You get that same kind of euphoria, that same sense of accomplishment in saying, yep, this problem, I understand it, and I can apply what I've learned in order to fix it. And I'm confident that the fix that I'm coming up with, that is the best fix for this particular problem. And that brings us to confidence. Once you have that knowledge, you're confident in when someone asks for your opinion, when someone comes to you and says, what is the best way? Or in your opinion, how do you think we should solve this? Or what solution should we go for? Or what technology should we use in this particular area? Your answer with that certification, with that credential, you exude that confidence and you can say, well, in my certified in my expert opinion or my professional opinion this is what we should do and this is why and you can bring that why over there and then people look to you to say i trust this person i will use them they've brought me good answers in the past they clearly know what they're talking about they're a key and critical member to our team and then there's that value. It is that kind of 360 degree value. It's not just about what it does for you, because if it's giving you knowledge and it's giving you confidence, when you're in that interview, when you're doing that job, when putting out that metaphorical fire in the data center, you are more attractive to your organization, your knowledge, your skills, you're delivering instant value, which your employer says, this is fantastic. This person is someone who I can count on to deliver when we're tactically, when we're reactive. And I can also count on this person to be more forward thinking, more of a technologist. They bring up ideas. They bring up thoughts of how we can do things differently in our organization, how we can better use technology. And then no matter what organization, what company you're in, you have someone, some group of customers, some group of stakeholders, be it their internal or their external, and you bring value to them because you understand what they need, what they're going through, and how technology can be used to better improve that. So you're able to say, you know what, this is a challenge that our customers or users, let's use the word users, are seeing. This is how we might better improve that. That again goes back into that cycle, into that 360 degrees, where it's giving your employer back that value because maybe now they're more competitive. They're making more money. They're delighting their customers. And then that's back to you because you look good in doing that. And that could lead to bonuses, lead to promotion and that kind of thing. And something I want to point out, and I mentioned it before, that lifelong learning. We don't want to look at certification as the end of our journey. We don't want to say, you know what, I got certified, I'm good. We should always be learning. And that's one of the things about IT. I've been at Cisco now just over 23 years. I've liked this area of technology around operations, like network operations, including automation, programmability of networks. And that didn't really exist when I started. So certainly network operations existed and we were using technologies like Telnet and SNMP and then SSH to kind of manage these devices. But we were doing it all very manually. We were connecting to device by device and operations has greatly improved or I would say innovated and transformed with this idea of net DevOps or the bringing in of automation, bringing in of programmability into this. So even something as kind of basic as network operations has transformed over the years. And we're always seeing that this industry is always going to be changing. So if you like that change, if you like being part of this kind of forefront of how we as a society are, are doing a lot of things now, this is the place for you. And you do have this opportunity to always be learning as you go. So now that you've heard why you should consider a career in IT, the role that Cisco certifications play, and why you should consider getting certified, let's talk a bit about the specific certifications and who they're for. We will also provide some training courses to get you started, but just know that no one resource is going to work for everyone. Work on finding the way to prepare that works best for you. 
We'll start with the entry level, the CCT or Cisco Certified Technician Certification and Training. This certification shows that you have the skills to successfully perform on-site support and maintenance of Cisco networking devices and that you can work effectively with the Cisco Technical Assistance Center or TAC team. To prepare for the CCT, we recommend short interactive training modules that provide an in-depth experience with Cisco devices. You can find some of these interactive training modules on the Cisco Learning Network store. Next up, the associate level certifications. There's the CCNA, or the Cisco Certified Network Associate Certification. This is basically the first step in preparing for a career in IT technologies. To earn a CCNA, you pass one exam that covers a broad range of fundamentals for IT careers based on the latest networking technologies, security, and automation and programmability skills and job roles. The CCNA gives you the foundation you need to take your career in any direction. To prepare, we recommend checking out the Implementing and Administering Cisco Solutions Training. Another associate level certification is the Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate Certification. This program focuses on the latest operational skills and knowledge you need for real-world jobs in Security Operations Centers, or SOCs. SOC, or SOC analysts, serve as the front line of defense against cybersecurity threats, preventing and detecting threats to defend your organization. To earn the Cyber Ops Associate, you have to pass the 120-minute assessment exam. We recommend that you use the course Understanding Cisco Cybersecurity Operations Fundamentals to prepare. The last certification on the associate level is the DevNet Associate Certification. Getting this certification proves your skills in developing and maintaining applications built on Cisco platforms. To earn it, you pass one exam that covers the fundamentals of software development and design for Cisco platforms. There's a course for this exam called the Developing Applications and Automating Workflows Using Cisco Core Platforms. And then there are the seven professional level certifications, CCNP Enterprise, CyberOps Professional, DevNet Professional, CCNP Collaboration, CCNP Data Center, CCNP Security, and CCNP Service Provider. The CCNP here stands for Cisco Certified Network Professional. I'm not going to go through each of these certifications because, well, that might take a while, and I'm sure you would rather I not go on and on about each one, and because this is meant to be an episode targeting individuals who are just interested in getting started. But if you're interested in learning more about each of these technology tracks, please visit the Cisco Learning Network at www.ciscolearningnetwork.com. Once there, click on Certifications and then navigate to the All Certifications page. Finally, there are the eight expert certifications, CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure, CCIE Enterprise Wireless, DevNet Expert, CCIE Collaboration, CCIE Data Center, CCIE Security, CCIE Service Provider, and CCDE. CCIE stands for Cisco Certified Internetwork Expert, and the CCDE stands for Cisco Certified Design Expert. The CCDE proves your skills designing and architecting complex enterprise network solutions. For a lot of these expert certifications, you have to pass two exams. The first is a qualifying exam that covers core technologies, and the second exam is a hands-on lab. These exams are no joke. The folks that can say that they are CCIE certified are really among an elite few. Okay, so those are the certifications, but just a quick note on Cisco's certification portfolio. It changes because technology changes. So the certifications that Cisco offers have to keep up with the rapid pace of technology. So if you're interested in Cisco certifications being a part of your IT career, we highly recommend you keep up with the changes that are announced, and you can do that by subscribing to the show and by creating a profile on the Cisco Learning Network. When you do that, you'll join a growing community of people that are either interested in or have achieved Cisco certifications. That's important for a number of reasons, but one of the biggest ones is that this community can help you. You can ask them questions, get answers, discuss career moves, study together, work together, and accomplish your goals together. That's it for our episode on how to get started in your IT career with Cisco certifications. Before we go, Joe has a note to end on. You're on a fantastic journey. And I think if you're that person who likes being that agent of change, who likes solving those tough problems, who likes thinking like a detective, and who likes interconnecting people and things, you are absolutely in the right place.